G'day all, this is a video on restoring a 1950 Fordson Major E27N. These are the photos of as we got it off the back of the truck. It was all complete, you know, tyres pumped up and all that. Had a post hole digger on the front. Um, we checked the essentials and we tried to make it go. See there that it fired on the second crank off the truck. It hadn't been going for at least five years that I know of, maybe longer. The needle and seat weren't seating properly in the carby, so he turned the fuel off so it didn't flood it. but it uses that fuel up pretty quick. I had a big old homemade crank handle out the front because of the um, post hole digger. It was a bit awkward. Let's just try and start it by the belt pulley. It, that's what the previous owners said they always used to do. They never used that big old homemade crank handle. Then first things first, we um, took the carby off it because it obviously was misbehaving. Pulled it apart, cleaned it all, sandblasted the outside of it. Uh, and next up was the magneto. And we did the same thing with it, pulled it all to bits, right down to its last nut and bolt. And then we just give it a good clean, sandblasted the outside, and I polished and clear coated the outside of that as well. And here you can see underneath the bracket was some original Fordson blue. You can see quite dark, that was under a bracket that was part of the post hole digger. There's just some photos of pulling it to bits piece by piece nuts and bolts weren't too bad on it, the tractor wasn't a pile of rust obviously needed a bit of penetrating oil of sorts on there but um, pulled it right down I sat it outside in a good spot where I can sandblast and paint it obviously had it covered up with the tarp uh, that's inside one of the Welsh plugs, completely clogged up. I think at least one of the Welsh plugs was rusted out, two of them were thin, but the whole water jacket was just clogged. Took the front axle off of it, so it was just sitting on a couple of stumps. 
Uh, it's just taken the uh, front wheel apart. I go through and flush out all the bearings and the in, the in bearing locations and all that. Cleaned every all the old grease out there. There was no there was no old stuff left in that when I was done with it. That was a pin from the clutch pedal was extensively worn. We, had to, we made a new one for there. And uh, it had blown a head gasket on me. Putting water in the in the sump there. It, um, yeah. Evidently you can see one of the cylinders. I think that was number three from memory. Two or three. Um, yeah, wasn't in too good a way, but we polished it up. Same with the valve seats. We uh, lapped all the put all the valves in the lathe and then once they were all nice and done we went through and we lapped the valves in and here you can see after it was all cleaned up we just stuck the crank handle in there an actual crank handle that I got off of a parts tractor so because I got rid of the post hole digger so I can put an original crank handle on there you can see all the valves are in there Now I thought we'd revive the old head gasket that was on it that had blown previously but we soaked, really soaked it with some copper gasket spray and hoped for the best. Looks new. Not the lightest things in the world but in him to line him up before it goes off too much. We're not there yet, are we? Okay, run them all down. That was opening the back end because both rear axle seals were both gone in it. They were just leaking oil everywhere, so took the axles out. Had to do a bit of butchering to get the seals off because, yeah, they were on there. But uh, we got a new one on and we put the axles back in here. Just trying to line that spline up with the inside of the big gear. The new axle seals on the axle, axles in, bearing got all greased up in there. So now we'll put the uh, the nut and split pin in to hold the axle in. So this is the nut. We put it on. This is a left-handed thread. 
So we'll run that up and we'll do it up you no know, tightish with our hands. A bit like that. And we'll see where our hole is. It's back a little bit there. And that should be sufficient preload for the bearings. We'll put our split pin in. Give it a little tap. Like that. We'll spin it over. Something like that. This is just putting dimples in it so that the seal stays located. I'll give this one a little bit more. Right, it's all clean and we're ready to put the lid back on. Yeah. Right, we'll get some bolts in. See under here, this is the PTO engage gears. Notice that there was a, um, we took that off because there was a seal there that was leaking, but you may have seen there was a really big brazing job under there, so it must have cracked at some point. You can see just there. Um, but they did a, um, a nice job of brazing that up, so I just left it as it just cleaned it up and painted it when it came time. That's where the clutch pedal was on the shaft with the pedals on it had extensive wear and the clutch pedal was actually like lent right over just about scraping on the mud guard that's how worn it was you just got yeah we've sanded back did a sort of no, I can say proper job for me on the mud guards we put spray putty on there and we sent what wet sanded it all primed it and wet sanded it and primed it again and all that got them really nice and smooth and this was my first lot of painting I did. You see me painting the mudguard here. I'm by no means a professional. Fast forward a little bit to tractors painted and rims are painted. I foolishly didn't take a lot of photos for some reason, but we got a GoPro. So there was a lot of time-lapse footage put together of putting the tractor back together bit by bit. Now you may have noticed the tractor's not original blue. It's a little bit lighter because you saw at the start of the video. It's The original blue's quite dark. I know it's not correct, but it looks nice, and it is what it is. Um, now, at some point, somehow, I lost a heap of footage from the GoPro. Don't know where it went. It hid them on me. So, <laughs> you get what you're given. Could be a good thing in a way, otherwise this video would have been about 12 hours long. Another thing we got off the parts tractor is the, the seat that was come off of this tractor. I assume it had been cracked a lot because there were welds going everywhere all through it and it was really ugly. But I knew the parts tractor that was there, it had a good seat on it. So I stole the seat off that as well.
Just cleaning up, ready to put the water pump on. Got plenty of gasket goo. We had the original copper gasket from it, which we were able to use again. And this is putting all the um, controls on. The bracket there that you can't quite see has the um, throttle and choke. And here I decide to put the PTO engage, disengage lever on and it's linkages that go around to that front box. So everything is held together with pins, with split pins in the other end, keeping everything in line. And next we had this big bracket that screwed on underneath the tractor. And the thing I did a lot with this, <laughs> admittedly, was say painting threads of bolts and like parts like that plate where it slides up in, it gets really tight and you have to end up polishing all the paint off it so you can slide stuff in or screw the bolts in anyway, so definitely a learning experience. And then we decided to put the uh, little A-frame and the front axle on. Again, all held together with pins and whatnot. We had the front sitting up in the air, as you can see, with the tractor. Held that up in the air with that. Whilst we attached all the front there, and we greased up all the wheels in inside there, filled it with grease, greased up the wheel bearings, and then we put the wheels on the front of the tractor, so it was able to stand on its own feet. That's that, just tightening up the wheel bearings a little bit, putting the nut and bolt in on that interesting looking wheel nut. My dad managed to, well, he's had for a while, that's a uh, original Fordson bearing cap spanner, or wheel nut cap spanner, so that was a perfect fit on that. So next we did, fitting the toolbox on there with its brackets, and then fitted the air intake pipe there
just putting I'm not entirely sure of the proper terminology but uh, just a link arm on there for the steering and again a lot of the pins I painted all the pins that hold link arms to other bits and pieces painted the pins they didn't fit I had to go and sand all the paint off them so definitely learnt something there but that was just attaching all the clutch linkage bought some new belts for it we've got two shims in there on that pulley now don't know if that's right or not it's a bit, bit of trial and error but we'll um, fit the belts adjust them so they're nice and tight it's definitely a process of trial and error with those shims there I think probably took it on and off six to eight times to try and get it right just trying every different little thing just to make it so it felt right tractors are lift the radiator up as you can see pop it in place obviously gasket good everything up I made new gaskets where I needed them if I could reuse the old one if it was in a good state I did but if not then I either made a new one or some places didn't have a gasket it was just gasket goo metal to metal nothing's leaked on it yet so far so that's good So last night, threw the radiator on, and then off camera, threw the shutters and the grill on. Haven't got a pin in it just yet, but it um, works all right. And, um, got a little bracket up there for the handle for the shutter pull thing over, so that's all good. Uh, we'll throw the manifold on now. Manifold and throttle body and carby maybe. See how we go. I had the fire rings were in a pretty uh, delicate state, so I just sort of placed them in there. And we had some, I forget what it is, special manifold gasket goo stuff, high temperature, G whiz, and it worked. <laughs> that went in all right. gasket gooing up for the throttle body to go on top of the manifold there now I'd sandblasted that part and you'll see a little bit later on in that video what can happen if you don't clean stuff out properly I, I did have, I made a new gasket for there between the carby and throttle body. I did touch up those screws later on with blue paint and a little touch up brush. You may have noticed the seats 
awfully close to the uh, steering wheel and that's because I may or may not have put the um, spring on back the front. So we'll, um, we'll turn it round and it should bring the seat a bit further back. I don't think all six foot of me will fit in that too well. But we'll turn it round and we'll see how it looks. You can see there the fuel tank's on. I did video that. I remember videoing it because the GoPro battery went flat very nearly just before we'd finished. Don't know where that video is, but fuel tank's on. It went on all right. Yeah, it's a bit better looking. It's a bit further back. So if someone like me comes in and sits on it, yeah, that's that's a bit nicer. Steering wheel's not right on your lap. Right arm might throw some headlight brackets on it now. I can see putting the headlight brackets and headlights on. I was fortunate enough for the tractor to come with two headlight brackets that weren't broken, which is quite uncommon because just they're, they're cast iron and you know they, they hang out from the tractor and vibration. It was common for them to break. So that's why you see a lot of them will be brazed up. They'll be brazed back together at some point. This is just putting the radiator cap surround little top bit on top of the radiator and now uh, with that radiator we took the top tank and bottom tank off I think from memory and we flushed all we flushed through all the radiator cores we sort of filled it all up with water and we could see I think there was only only three or four blocked tubes blocked little cause so I was pretty lucky in that considering the state of the water jacket behind those um, Welsh plugs it was just proper clogged there was no water ever getting down there now this is putting on the um, fuel tap and fuel bowl and fuel lines for that matter um, I got I bought a new cork gasket for the glass fuel bowl not to say you can't make one, I could have made one, but I think there was one that was awfully cheap on the internet that I bought oh, possibly a while before, I think it was before I even started to restore the tractor. But this all went on pretty smoothly. Reused the original rubber air intake hose there. It, it was cracked in a couple of the bends there but I just got some black Sikaflex and I gooed up, gooed up the inside of it just to seal any possible, you know, leaks or anything that are uh, after the oil bath air cleaner which is installed there as well. And you can see putting the uh, mud guards on. And that mud guard did have an aluminium, like an etched aluminium instructions plate on it and unfortunately it had just over time it had gone blank there was no words or anything left on it I was fortunate enough to know someone that well I met up with someone that had one and he give a brass plaque to me for the mudguard so I'm very thankful for that I was given a brass plaque for the instruction plate for the mudguard there just putting the other one on that all went pretty smoothly it had a rear, I forget which one, it might have been the other mug guard than this one, but it had a rear light bracket there, which I did paint up, but I don't have a rear light, so I didn't put the bracket on there, so it's the just got a couple of holes. The steering wheel's a little bit had it. I've seen this days on the farm, so went online and found myself a uh, replacement one. And I know it's supposed to have an alloy one, 
but this one obviously had a rubber replacement at some point. LO one may have cracked, but um, this one will do just fine. It fits on the spline nice and snug. Do the nut up. I think that's quite all right. May or may not have put that on upside down, but it's fixed now. Just like a new one. Well, here it is, 95% complete. It's pretty much all put back together and right to start using the crank. None of the electrics are on it yet. The electrics are about half done. Um, it's got fresh oil in the rear end gearbox, um, air filter, full of water. It's got petrol. It's got spark. We cleaned the points. It's out of gear. It should be right to fire up for the first time in about three and a half years, I think. We'll see how we go. We'll set the throttle to about half. We'll give it a full choke. I'm fairly sure the throttle's behaving. So we'll see. Um, actually, I'll make the spark late. The crank starting, which which one's late and in the slot? In the slot's late. All right, take your word for it. Wait. If it's late, it shouldn't backfire and it shouldn't break my thumb. But it's right. incredibly flooded because that had the choke on so I'll go choke off Okay, a bit of a progress update. It's got the wiring harnesses in, electrical boxes in, it's got one of its eyeballs in, other ones hanging there. But um, got the wiring harness made, tried to match the colour as close as I can. And electrical box is all good. Battery's a bit flat so it doesn't kick the starter motor over hard enough, but horn works and we've got We've got headlights as well, so it was a bit of a battle figuring out how exactly they go together because it's been a while since I pulled it apart, but no, it, it all all seems to work all right. So at the start when we started the tractor, generator wasn't generating anything, and because it had been sitting for so many years, it had lost, lost its residual magnetism, I think is the right words, big words for me. Um, so we had to get the active side of the battery, which is the neutral, or the negative side, and flash the field wire, which is that red one there, to sort of kickstart it. And it picked itself up and it started generating all A-OK. -okay. So that was the only thing we run into, but other than that, everything works a treat so far. So we'll continue putting the other headlight together, and then we'll find some of those brass cable ties that were on the tractor. I've got a few like that that come off it and we'll tidy up the wiring harness a bit. And then after that, we've got a bit of orange paint to do on the front. A bit of touch up blue paint here, there and everywhere. I'll have to stick that straight pipe in the manifold somehow or another because it's just sitting there right now 
Um, so yeah, there's not, not too much more to go on it. Right, here we go. Wiring harness is all hooked up. I've got those brass cable ties there yet to go on, just haven't cleaned them up. Wiring harness is on, all hooked up, it's all nice. Eyeballs are in. All going on, shortened. That little short one there for the lights on the other side was a bit long, so I shortened it. And it works all right now. This was about <laughs> you know, 10 inches too long, so I shortened that. It's neat enough for me. Working a treat. Horn still works. The battery's still a bit... A bit flat. But, um... No, all good. The generator generates. Um, also, it was revving a little bit high at idle for my liking. So I adjusted that to suit. Idle's nice and low. So all that's left to do now is, I suppose on my list of things, make sure all the split pins are there, where they're supposed to be and whatever needs them. Bit of touch-up paint, blue and orange and some orange paint on the letters. And then she should be just about done. So we're getting real close. I think it's time to give it some orange letters. So while I paint orange letters here on the radiator, I'll just go over what happened before in the video when it revved up. So what I'd done is a return spring on the, on the throttle body where the governor links up to it. Now one way or another, I'd put that on wrong. So it wasn't really helping to return return it closed and there was still some sand just on the not on the actual throttle throttle body side but on the other side where the governor arm links up there was still some sandblasting sand in there and it would just caused it to bind like caused it to like sort of be stuck now of course when it engine sitting stopped the governor pulls the throttle open so it was in the open position and when it started and built up the RPMs because because of the sand and no help by the spring it couldn't close the throttle and that's why it revved now it didn't do any mechanical damage at all to the tractor it's all fine it ran fine afterwards after we fixed it and cleaned cleaned it out got all the sand out of it works a treat now but what it did do and what it was always going to do whether it revved or not is it blew the head gasket again the one that had already blown we just tried our luck with it and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't win on that one. Uh, luckily enough, I had a brand new old stock head gasket for it. So I didn't video it. I pretty much did it all in a night. I just took the fuel tank off and did what I needed to just to take the head off, replace the head gasket and put it all back together. So I did all that in basically or pretty much just half a day all up probably and I thought I videoed some of that but evidently not but either way new head gasket went on and it all worked a treat there after that new head gasket was fine Well, it's been about two months since the last clip and I can finally say the tractor's done. I got some decals that are pretty much identical to the original ones off of the rally badges person. They were good, they, they went all right, on all right for me first go. Um, I put three uh, helicoils in the bottom of the magneto because the threads were just stripped, it's aluminium housing. Uh, it's eyeballs are in and they work well. Wiring harness is all good. I'll show you the... Uh, Headlights there, you've got parkers there, low beam and high beam, there's not too much difference between them. It uh, runs pretty damn good for what it is. It's still got a dragging clutch though, so there'll be a bit of grinding on the gears. We'll see if we can take it for a drive. I'll set the spark late. A bit of throttle, it's been running, so I won't give it any choke. We'll see what happens.
you have a horn, it's got to work.
All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. There we go.